I'm uh, Stefan Wigges, so I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I work for Dutchworks. I'm a Dutch guy. I'm an integration MVP, like some of my fellow speakers. Published author, so I've written a book, I think, a few years ago about uh, BISTOP 2010 as a cookbook. I like to do some TechNet Wiki um, articles, so that's more my thing these days. I used to do blogging and forums. And I'm really into uh, NFL, so the last couple of years I went to uh, the Seahawks games and I'm hooked to the sports, so it's really neat sport. So I'm one of the 12 men, if you would say so. Um. Anyways, why this talk? You know, I've been running more into to a REST architecture these days and I'm, you know, getting familiar with a guy called Jason. So um, I don't know if you got more into to integration with where you have to deal with like JSON format or with a REST architecture, with a show of hands, who's more facing these kinds of challenges. Okay, so there are people here that are facing similar challenges as I do. So I'm getting running into more and more of, of getting into the, the new world where you're more facing like REST architecture and, and JSON. So there's also a lot of change, right? There's a lot of data that can be displayed, but there's also data that cannot be displayed, right? We're facing more distributed data. And that's also to do with, with this whole new paradigm with REST architecture and JSON formats and stuff. So you see change from capital expenditure, so in, in, you know, investments in, in on-premise infrastructure to more operational costs where you're using Microsoft Azure. Instead of you know, PC, web, you're running more mobile devices. Everyone has a mobile device these days, right? One, two, three, four iPads, uh, services, and so on. And we're going from, from mouses to more touch and sensor stuff. Data from customers is more like data from people, so that's like the social media. You've got like transaction local workflow, so more like orchestration, so the things that go on uh, within your own data center to something that's more orchestrated without, um, within the cloud and locally. And instead of running your data in one data center, data is distributed and running everywhere. So instead of being centralized, it's being distributed all over. So we're running basically, and you've heard that yesterday too, there are changes going on and we kind of, you know, gunning into a new world. So a lot of us are still doing integration on premise, with databases, with mainframes maybe still, and other stuff. And then you got your deep, you got your Bistock server, which is basically for your deep integration. Like if you read some of the, the Gartner reports and stuff, and they're talking about, or Forrester, I believe, they're talking about deep integration, then you're still talking about Bistock server. But there's also another world out there, right? So you got your devices, you got SaaS apps, you got an you know, integration maybe with partners through Microsoft Azure. So basically, like these worlds come together, or basically maybe the top one is taking over the bottom one. And that might happen maybe also in the future with apps. So you got your own data center where you got SOAP, XML, and then you got this other world with REST and JSON. So we're going to do, at least running into, we're going to do more kind of what I would say modern integration. So you got applications and services and stuff on-prem, a line of business system, and you got all these applications up there in the cloud. Like Salesforce, Dropbox, you saw some demos yesterday. So there are all kinds of different endpoints you need to integrate with, right? <clears throat> so integration still is key. There's an upsurge everywhere. There's a huge demand for integration. It's in Europe, it's in the US, and even there are Australian guys I know that are walking around with saying, hey, work for us in Australia. So integration is key, integration is hot, and that's because all of this change that's happening now. And integration on-prem with the integration in the world, which is the cloud. But there still will be need for integration if you're looking on-prem. You've got like large business systems like SAP. Will SAP go to the cloud? Not likely yet. So that integration on-premise, that kind of deep integration will still go on. So I still think people are asking, you know, what's the direction of BISTOP? Well, I think it's still going to be here for quite a few years just because of that deep integration. The more simple-like integration will focus or will be going more towards those apps, which is all kind of the microservices or paradigm in architecture. But we'll still have that integration on-prem. There's still also a lot of uh, like CRM systems I'm dealing with currently with a customer, Siebel. That's kind of hard, and you still need to integrate with those, and they're hardly not going to migrate in the next couple of years. So that may be changed to another CRM system.
So the focus still will be on application integration instead of infrastructure because your, your infrastructure for, for integration can run on-prem, but it can also run in a cloud, right, like BizTalk IIS. So I've been talking in the past about um, integration with the cloud um, with 2.13, about the service bus integration of using relays and stuff. And what I like to do now is more focusing on what you can do with 2.13 R2, where you have to deal on one end with REST. And I think most of you are familiar with the REST architecture. So it's based on this HTTP protocol. And you have your resource somewhere, you have an endpoint sticking onto it, and then you can approach it. Uh, for HTTP using those methods, and the way you do it's all up to you. So that's REST on one way. And then you got your JSON on the other way. That's kind of the more um, format you're seeing currently on the web, right? It's all about JSON. That's kind of the format you're seeing. And this is kind of the way it is fast, it's less verbose, it's far easier for machines and devices to interpret and use instead of XML, which is quite verbose. And you need kind of the performance when you're dealing with devices. I've got some demos, at least. Kind of the solutions is like, I've got some, some client that triggers a, uh, a process or sends out a message to BizTalk, which then kind of consumes a, uh, a RESTful endpoint. So one is the Federal Aviation Agency. I've done this demo in the past where you just do a REST call, but instead of now getting XML back, you now can get JSON back because BizTalk R2 has this kind of neat feature where you can do JSON N and decoding. So instead of doing some custom coding, you got those encoding and decoding now within BizTalk. So that's kind of the newer feature. It might be a little trivial, but it enables you now to do kind of integration with RESTful endpoints in an easier way with just configuration. So this is all configured. And what I will show you is how the JSON will come on and how you can on. And another demo is more like, so I'm going to do two in one. It's kind of the same process, so I've got SOAP XML kind of communication with my BizTalk on one end, which is kind of you know, to, to depict and how is that what goes on on-prem. And I will just consume in this kind of a cloud API. So I'm doing um, Last.fm, which is a kind of a website that enables you to search um, all kinds of bands and different types of music styles, look up their videos and what kind of records they've put out. Also showing the ability that you can have integration with cloud APIs using the web HTTP adapter. Oh, I'm going a little too fast. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to switch to my demo machine. Okay. So the first will be like consuming that RESTful endpoint, right? So here I got this pipeline where I have placed my JSON decoder because I'm going to send out um, a request, a RESTful call to this FAA agency um, service, basically that gives me the status back of um, any kind of major airliner in the US. And I've got some two streaming pipeline components before and after the decoder, which is uh, something you've built in the past, Dan Rosanova. It's a streaming pipeline component. You can do archiving, but just, just to show you what happens? So if I fire up my client, just to trigger the process. So I'm just pick uh, one major airport, let's say Atlanta International Airport. I will send out a message, which just sends out the uh, airport code, which is ATL, and that will go to that FAA um, RESTful endpoint, and that will give me um, information about the airport back. So there's some latency going on, so this might take a little while. Fingers crossed. So it will give me the airport status back and also um, the weather. Oh, this is really exciting. Well, I've done this already um, before, so the JSON will look like this. It's like the whole JSON string, so that comes in. And it then will get serialized to, to this. And it will go back to the client. And it has timed out, fortunately. 
But this does, is, I've done this before, this is what happens. So the JSON comes in and it, uh, in the end it gets serialized into XML, which would then be displayed like this, but then in the, um, in the client itself. Now to serialize your JSON into XML, you need to catch that JSON format, so that's what I've done, and then you can get it through another feature which is in BizTalk 2.13 R2. It's kind of the wizard that gives you the ability to create an XML schema out of JSON. So that's also out of the box with, with BizTalk. I've got another demo which um, basically is consuming or at least communicate with a cloud API that's that Last FM API. Anyone familiar with Last FM API or at least the Last FM website where you can just a few? Well, it's quite interesting if you want to find out certain bands and you know related bands, etc. So one of the APIs uh, methods is like okay, lists um, information about a band. So this one goes a bit quicker. So this is like okay, some of the band information. So that's one of the operations you can call on that API. And then, for instance, you can do another call asking for what their top um, albums are. So I'd like to show you a bit of the configuration of that web HTTP, in this case for um, that last FM integration. So I hope this is clear enough. Otherwise I'll just... So I'm using the uh, web HTTP binding. And within that binding, I'm using, and uh, who's worked with the web HTTP before? Just show of hands, so a lot of you probably know this kind of ways of working, where you do also um, what's called URL mapping. So that's kind of the operation you do. So you build up the kind of a REST call string, but you want to make it more kind of interactive and dynamic. So in this case, for that API, you can stick in what kind of method, artist, and what's more important in this case, is the API key. So for LastFM, you need to create kind of an account, and then you need to create an application, and that will give you kind of an API key. So for that RESTful endpoint for that government agency is just public, so that doesn't require any kind of security. But in this case, you need to stick in that API key too in every call you're making. So that's kind of the configuration. So what you just saw a bit is like what I'm trying to depict is that the old world there where you talk XML and SOAP is talking to that new world with REST and JSON. So you see kind of a protocol mediation. You see that you can handle different formats going from JSON in this case back to XML. You saw a bit of the behavior. So that's what I tried to use with that archiving way that you see, hey, it's JSON coming in and then it's XML. And also you see that you can either consume a RESTful endpoint that's behind a kind of a resource. So for instance, like for the Federal Aviation Agency, with you know, you kind of kind of a composite service that gives you status and the weather report back. Or you can just interact really with a cloud API. Of course, there are other means and ways to do it. You saw it yesterday, but it's still possible combining it with um, with BizTalk. And what I like to do now is more showing you another kind of ways is where you can still using BizTalk kind of your deep integration where you combine data with your line of business systems like Siebel or SAP. Combined with some data you can just gather from the cloud, right? And just combine those, aggregate those, or enrich it, enrich it using BizTalk, and then feed an ODS, which then is kind of a data store for a website, either locally or within your um, Microsoft Azure, so Microsoft Azure website. So I'll just switch back. And then you see kind of my um, awesome uh, front-end skills. So this is kind of a Google Apps, well, Google Maps, I mean. And that's some of those airlines still out there. So if you just hover over, and then if you click on it, then I get that data back from that data store. So that's just to show you how you can create applications using that data that's being aggregated by or enriched by uh, BizTalk in this case, and that's then pushed out to an operational data store. So that's something you can do, and it's something I'm doing currently at a customer too in a different kind of way for marketing perspective. So gathering kind of data for showing off um, 
how green the utility company is with um, generating uh, solar power and wind power and depicting and showing that to the end customer, saying, yeah, well, this is what we do. And this talk is somewhere there hidden. You won't see it, but it plays a certain role in gathering that data and displaying it. And it might change in the future using apps, but it's still doable with the current 213 R2 platform. So that's kind of cool. So you do still see that BizTalk will somehow play a certain role within your enterprise IT landscape, either being on-prem or maybe running in the cloud as an IaaS platform. And you just, what I just showed you, there are many variations possible having BizTalk playing a certain role in your enterprise solution to present, for instance, that data I just showed you in that website. And it will more do maybe a playing a role in data enrichment or and also a bit in maybe in data distribution going from deep integration to your line of business systems to feed all kinds of operational data stores. So that's what I'm seeing at one of my current customers. So just to recap, so this is a short talk, so it just was just one of the newer features of the R2 platform. You see that JSON support. And you see that from a connectivity standpoint, BizTalk is still evolving. So you saw 230 R2, you saw that service bus protocol support, you saw the relay endpoints, and now with the web page speed, that was already there in 213. But on R2, you got your JSON support. And you can see that you, with this platform still, you can leverage cloud APIs or RESTful endpoints. And it's another way of integration. You can do this in different ways. You can do it with .NET. You can use maybe that durable task framework you saw yesterday. It's all open. This is just a means to an end where you can do kind of an integration. Challenges may be if you're integrating with cloud APIs, might be security. Let's say if you integrate with Salesforce, you might face like all oh, authentication or that kind of part of stuff. So from that perspective, you still might need to do custom coding using DOPCF behaviors, for instance. Okay, so these are my, um, my contact details. Oh, cool, right on time. User page, some of the stuff I you just saw, I've also um, written down in the Wikipedia pages. Or in, uh, not Wikipedia, I mean the TechNet Wiki, so that's kind of a platform. Anyone's familiar with the TechNet Wiki? So it's a great resource. I think there are, there are around 400 pages regarding BizTalk now from all kinds of topics, operations, um, Integration, what I've shown you today, uh, other parts, and also the code for those first two um, demos. You can find those in um, the Amazon code library as well. So, okay, this was kind of a short uh, lightning talk just to show you how Bistec 213 R2 gives you new means of integration with, uh, with the cloud in this case, so cloud uh, endpoints like uh, what you saw, uh, cloud. Uh, the, sorry, uh, APIs you find in the cloud, so you can still integrate with those as well in a more maybe old-fashioned style of way. So I hope you have a great day today with the other uh, presentations coming on. Any questions? What well, you saw, it was all crystal clear. If not, then the floor is yours. Thank you.